Welcome to the Words to Empower podcast, featuring Bishop Frank Stewart, pastor of the Acts Ministry in Conway and North Little Rock, and now, Pastor Stewart. Welcome back to your Acts Ministry podcast, and we're studying a very, very important subject, uh, one uh, series that we have we have never done before uh, during this time or any time, but especially during this time, we're, we're studying leadership 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 under pressure leadership in a crisis and a crisis we've chosen since it's so so pertinent to where we are in this day and time is is from crucifixion to resurrection actually from Gethsemane before crucifixion and and after crucifixion after the resurrection that's what we're looking at we're looking at that time period. That's that's a very, very short period of time. We're talking about a seven-day period at the most. Within seven days, we want to just study leadership, leadership in a crisis. And the reason why we think it's so pertinent, because now in the midst of this epidemic, leadership has been exposed. Leadership, leadership, leadership under pressure. So we must pray. We must pray. It is very Obvious why the Lord said to pray for them that are in authority. Pray for leaders. Pray for uh, rulers. Pray for pastors and shepherds. Because in a crisis, what a leader does can determine death and life for those that are following. Those that are right behind. That's critical, brothers and sisters. That's critical, very critical. On yesterday... We, we came to verse in, in Matthew chapter 26. We start in Matthew chapter 26, and we're at verse number 46. 46. And it, it, it says this, Rise, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. And while Jesus was still speaking, behold, Judas, one of the twelve, with a great multitude with swords and clubs, came from the chief priests and elders of the people, Came with them, and the Bible says, "Now he betray- now his betrayer had given them a sign, saying, Whomever I kiss, he is the one. Seize him, seize him!" Immediately, Judas went up to Jesus and said, "Greetings, mm-hmm. Rabbi," and kissed him. Now, let's just let's just look at this, because in the midst of all of this, we we're seeing perfect leadership the way leaders should act, and that is being betrayed by Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is showing them, showing us. But we've talked about the disciples. We've talked about Peter. We've talked about what is happening to leadership and and, and how it's been exposed and what a crisis will do to expose leadership. Judas, as, as we were talking on yesterday, the thing with Judas is he had a problem, but he never overcame the problem. And that speaks volumes to all of us as leaders because you want to overcome a problem. You want to overcome it. You want to deal with it. But that same problem becomes becomes immeasurable when it is placed in a crisis. So here's Judas. Judas, the crisis is going on. Crucifixion getting ready to happen. He's an intricate part of it. He betrays the Lord. 30 pieces of silver. 30 pieces of silver. Judas. Judas. That's what he got for betraying Jesus. And he didn't get a chance to spend a dime of it. Not a dime of it. He went and hung himself. And I heard somebody say that if you don't deal with your problems, your problems will hang you. And I'm telling you, especially during a crisis, Especially during a crisis. Especially when things are in reverse, when things are falling apart. Judas loved the money. He loved the money. And he never was able to uh, get past that. The Bible talks about him uh, lying. Saying that, 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 that oil, that fragrance, that Mary washed Jesus' feet with. He says that it should have been sold and given to the poor. Now that's hypocrisy. 
And the Bible says that it wasn't the poor he was concerned about. He was concerned that he had the bag. He was a thief. The Bible says he was a thief. And he wasn't able to get past that. You said he was a thief? Yes, think about it. Think about it. That shouldn't be odd or weird to us. The Bible tells us in the book of Ephesians, we that have been born again, let him who stole steal no more. So coming to the Lord Jesus should bring forth changes in all of us, should bring forth changes, should take us to another place, another dimension in him, in him. We have to pray for him to help us so we can crucify the flesh. We can bury the flesh with the Lord Jesus Christ. And reckon ourselves to be dead. Reckon ourselves to be dead. You got to think you're dead to that. You got to believe you're dead to that. And while a dead man, a dead man will not, not be affected by the things that are going on around him. Judas never overcame it. So Jesus says to him in verse 50, but Jesus said to him, friend, why have you come? Then they, then they came and laid hands on Jesus and took him. Jesus says, friend. Called him friend. He's called him friend. See, he's showing us this perfect example of what a leader does under pressure during a crisis. He did not fight back. He did. He did not get out of character. And that's that's what an epidemic would do. That was a pandemic will do. That's what happens when when everything is going in reverse and there's a crisis everywhere. What I happen? What I happen? We'll get out of character. Well, get out of character. And, and, and when you get out of character, what the damage, what you can do out of character, you cannot fix in a lifetime. There are some things that, that can happen when those that are in charge, those that are leading, get out, leaders, get out of character. Stay tuned for more of Frank Stewart. And now for some special announcements. Thanks for partnering with the Acts Ministries. We value your service and your donations. That's why we've made it easy to make contributions to support our ministry. Simply go to your web browser and click the search bar and type in xministriesonline.org. Then click Donate Online. It's really that easy. For mobile giving, text the amount you wish to donate to 501-302-4242. That's Simple Give. And now, more of Pastor Frank Stewart. That, that, that could live five lifetimes and it wouldn't fix it for some people. So Judas, Judas here betrays the Lord. The Lord is in character and he's still showing him love. Still showing him love. Now watch this. Watch this. And then it says in verse 51, and suddenly one of those who were with Jesus stretched out his hand, drew his sword, struck the servant of the high priest, and cut off his ear. But Jesus said to him, Put your sword in its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Now, again, again, watch the Lord. Watch the Lord. If you want to watch somebody during crisis, you, you watch the Lord. Look at how he handles this pressure. He hand, Peter's fighting. Peter's trying to help the Lord escape. He's trying to let Jesus get away. He's fighting for Jesus. Fighting for Jesus. That is not the way to do it, though. It's not the way to do it. Now, you got to understand some fight was in Peter. This is not something that all of a sudden that just rose up in Peter. This was in him. Peter, James, and John, when you look at their characters, they were very tumultuous. They, you know, Peter, in the midst of this, became violent. You trying to take the Lord? I'm going to fight. But the Bible tells us that the weapons of our warfare, they're not carnal. They're not physical. So Peter cuts off. We know it's Peter by the other gospel writers. He cuts off uh, the high priest's servant ear, which was Malchus. He cuts his ear off. And and he is fighting. He's fighting. He's fighting. He's fighting because he think his way out of this 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 situation, out of this crisis, is to physically physically fight. Physically go to war. See, that's what he think. 
He's totally in the flesh now. He's not he's not thinking about nothing else. So we have to understand that in 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 a crisis, it exposes. It exposed Judas as a thief. It exposed Peter, his violent tendency. It, it exposed the weaknesses of the, the inner circle, Peter, James, and John. And and watch what Jesus says to Peter. He says, "You got to put up your sword. You're going, you know, if you live by that, you're going to die by it." And then he makes this. This he makes this. He makes this. He makes this powerful statement. This powerful statement. He says, or do you think that I cannot now pray to my father and he will provide me with more than 12 legions of angels? How then could the scriptures be fulfilled that it must happen thus? So so Jesus says, now, wait a minute. Don't you know that I can pray for 12 legions of angels? If you will, if you will, 12 armies of angels, if you will, to come. To come, to come. He says, he had told them, no man take my life. I lay it down. Because the only way, that, only way that you can kill me if I lay it down. If I don't lay it down, then you cannot kill me. You cannot destroy me. I'm going to lay it down. And I'm laying it down for you. And I'm laying it down for the ones that's going to kill me. This is leadership. This is leadership. Total, total responsibility for mankind. Jesus is saying, I get to be blamed. Now, that that this is the last Adam. You know the first Adam, the first Adam, he said, he said, the woman you gave me. Adam wasn't taking no, he wasn't taking no blame. He said it was the woman. This is the last Adam. This is the last Adam. And this is the Christ. He says, with his actions, I'll take the blame. I t- no man take my life. I lay it down. So, so you see all the different leaders that is going on, the leadership here. But we see in the midst of it, true leadership. In the midst of crisis, true leadership. And, and the Lord began to say to them, the Lord began to say to them, he says, he says, how then could the scripture be fulfilled? Got to do it. In that hour, Jesus said to the multitude, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to take me? I sat daily with you teaching in the temple, and you did not seize me. But all this was done that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples forsook him and fled. Now, when we look at that, in totality, we know that Jesus had told them, let them go. Because, see, that's, he, he, had poured, he had poured in them. And just like he said, he's the, he's, the, he's the true shepherd. He's the true shepherd. He gives his life for the sheep. He's not a hireling. So, in, he, you know, he, he, he was giving his life. And he wanted them to, to let them go because they had word in them. They, he had poured everything in them. In the midst of their fear, trepidation, what we must always remember is that when we calm down what he has sown in us, the word that has been put in us, is still there. It's still there. But in this moment, in this moment of panic, in this moment of fear, moment of fear, we see, we see the disciples, all of them, leaving, running. And that's what Jesus wanted. Because he was given his life. He's the good shepherd. He's given his life for mankind. So he had to die. He's given his life for the disciples. But in order for us to have the gospel, they had to be free. They cannot be killed here. All right, brothers and sisters, we passed time. I want you to come back tomorrow. We're going to continue studying about leadership in crisis. And we use it from the resurrection or from Gethsemane to after the resurrection, about seven day span. Seven day span tells us a great deal about the leaders, about leaders during a crisis. For mobile giving, text the amount you wish to donate to 501-302-4242. Sunday school begins at 8.30 a.m. And for a powerful word, 
Join us at 9.30 a.m. for our morning worship service. Bible study is each Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. For more information, go to axeministriesonline.org or give us a call at 501-329-2055. Thank you for tuning in to the Axe Ministry Podcast. The Axe Church is located at 1423 Indian Street in Conway and 1224 Franklin Street in North Little Rock, Arkansas. Tune in each day to hear an inspiring word from Pastor Frank Stewart.